Today, you're gonna to learn about HTTP status code 403, what it is, why it's important, and how to deal with it. I'm Tommy Griffith with clickminded.com. Let's get going. So before we dive into HTTP status code 403 stuff, I wanna talk a little bit about the HTTP protocol, some of the internet basics that you kinda of need to understand before we dive deep into this one. The internet is made up really of two core things, and that's clients and servers, right? So you have clients, web clients, that's your browser, right? Maybe it's Chrome, maybe it's Firefox, maybe it's Safari. If you're a godforsaken human being, maybe it's Internet Explorer. But if you're, <laughs> you're usually accessing the internet through one of these clients, right? Whenever you request a website, you're usually making a request from a web server. You make a request and the server responds. That's happening every single time you're clicking a link. You make this request using what we call the HTTP protocol. Okay, so protocols are really just standards that everyone on the internet has agreed to. It's no different than English or Spanish or Chinese. It's a language that we've all agreed to, right? So a client makes a request to the server, what happens next? Status codes let us know whether the request was a success, a failure, or something in between, right? That's what an HTTP status code is. Okay, so let's jump into each one of these next. So the 100 block, these are informational requests. Uh, the 200 block, those are successful requests. The 300 block are gonna be for redirects, redirection. 400 block will be for client errors, and 500 block will be for server errors. 400 block are for client errors, right? That means the page wasn't found, something is wrong with the request, right? So whatever is happening on the client side is the issue. Right, a 400 might be a bad request, a 401 unauthorized, a 403 forbidden. We're gonna talk about the most important ones a little bit later, but the basic idea here is that any, any status code that comes in as a 400 is a client error. Okay, so HTTP status code 403 forbidden. So this one is intense, right? A 403 forbidden error is much more explicit than a 401. A 401 is like a credentialing problem, user login, or maybe a missed password, uh, and the server is basically saying, hey, try again with, with a 401. A 403 is much more explicit. The server knows who you are, they know you've logged in, but they're explicitly telling you that you aren't allowed to access whatever you're trying to access. It's not a credential problem, they're saying, we know who you are, sorry pal, you can't come in. So 403 is usually very intentionally done by the server and it means something, something's up here, right? You're, you shouldn't be where you are. So make sure to watch out for that. So that's all there is to it. That's the 403 forbidden error. So I hope that was useful, if it was helpful, and if you learned something today, go ahead and click subscribe down below for even more digital marketing tactics and tips from us. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment. Are you seeing a 403? What's the problem? Tell us a little bit about it. I read every single one. Finally, if you want our comprehensive HTTP status code guide, along with a tool to check all of your HTTP status codes, go ahead and click the link down below to clickminded.com to get that guide as a free downloadable today. Thanks a lot.